Hi everyone, welcome back to the day 14 session on the web driver. In the day 13 session we learn about, we actually started with the Actions API. Uh, so Actions API is something that is coming from, that is from web driver and it helps us to perform the different user operations. So for example, click, double click, right click, um, you know, pressing some button, typing some keys, something, you know, drag and drop mouse overing, you know. So these are the different kind of operations that you can do with the help of actions. So from that we have covered a click. <clears throat> there is also a send keys present for typing. So yesterday we covered double click. Okay, it was completed uh, in our day 13 session. So that was the example code. And also we learned one more topic in the last session, that is how to get the CSS value. And the action API which I have used is this code. So you just have to simply create object of actions. Actions is a class. And, uh, <coughs> and um, we pass a web driver to the constructor. Actions dot double click element, you know, and then this is just adding an action. So I have added action, double click, and then perform. If you call perform, then only that action will be actually executed in your browser, okay? So don't forget to call perform method. So, all right, so let's go and create uh, the new examples. Let's uh, copy the old dependencies, you know, the dependencies from this project and create a new project, so it will save some time. So uh, today we will be covering few more actions. Now for example, let's cover first uh, <coughs> performing mouse over, okay? How to perform mouse over um, on button, then another performing mouse over of a button, then we will cover a few more actions like right click, how to perform right click, uh, then we will also see send keys, you know, send keys for sending some special keys that way. <coughs> there are a few more uh, things that you can try like drag and drop, drag and drop, key press and release, you know, etc. Key down and, you know, key up event also. All right, so uh, let's go and copy the dependency. dependencies, file, new, project, maven project, that's a D14, actions API, uh, let's say two, oh sorry that's a group ID right, I should be giving that as artifact ID, and group ID as let's say com.vcast.training, I will say finish, <coughs> come back here, a project is created with the empty pom.xml, oh this is the project. The pom.xml will be initially empty with except few, uh, three, four details initial, okay. In that pom.xml, let's add dependencies tag, oops my bad get it from the previous project, testing it here, save it, as you save, uh, it will, you know, uh, you will see a progress bar, wait until that progress bar is completed <coughs> and make sure there is no any warning to your project.
All right. So, <coughs> so uh, what I will do is I will create a new class and uh, there I will simply create a class as let's say mouse over example okay let's create a class but before that you should have some example you know uh, <coughs> to uh, perform some mouse over operation so I, what I can do is I can actually uh, create I can actually uh, create um, sample HTML which will handle the on mouse over event or or else I can save my time and just Google some you know mouse over application that we can use okay the example I'm going to take is the online website Flipkart and Flipkart has some functionality you know if you mouse over on the main menus it will show you sub menu menu for example if you mouse over on the men it will show you all the sub menus present inside a men or if you say mouse over on the home and furniture you will see a big uh, sub, nav sub navigation menu under home and furniture so uh, what we will do is we will write some automation script and just check whether that sub nav menu, menu is displayed when you perform mouse over so um, let me write a test case okay public void test sub nav menu let's say I want to test sub nav menu men okay that is my test case and what I will do is the initial two three lines are common right so system dot out dot print oh what I am why, why am I writing system out so system dot set property okay web driver everybody knows the intention web driver why are we writing this what is the purpose we already have covered in the first or second session in of web driver so I'm directly writing a code without any explanation <coughs> so my drivers are present on e drive drivers slash slash chrome driver dot exe that is where my chrome driver is present on the next line I will write web driver web driver driver is equal to new oops new Chrome driver perfect now it is time to open Flipkart so webdriver.get is the method don't forget to pass the protocol okay you can skip WW and simply just write uh, flip f l i p k a r t dot com flipkart dot com all right once it is loaded uh, what I will do is I will also add driver dot manage dot timeouts dot implicitly wait okay so we have already used implicitly wait uh, in one of our previous example but in short let me tell you what is implicitly wait implicitly wait is some timeout let's say uh, you know I'm writing a code driver dot find element by you know link text my link text is uh, let's go to the web page let's see men is the element I want to inspect that element men it is span okay it is span with the text men this span do not have class do not have ID so what I can do is I can take help of the parent parent is a tag with the title equal to men now you can confirm whether this title equal to men is unique because there is no ID there is class but this class looks like some random number uh, title equal to men is more readable so I'm taking that locator so I'm saying uh, it is title right it is attribute so square brackets is for attribute so in the square bracket attribute equal to value the CSS syntax I'm using so in square bracket title is equal to 
men in single or double quotes. Just take that locator. Uh, I will not say link text. I will say uh, what is that? It's a CSS selector. All right. Just replace the double quote with a single quote because um, you know if you want to have double quote inside a string, then you should write slash double quote. But better is just replace that double quote with a single quote. You know that just reduces the task or overhead. So this line, what it will do? It will find the element. But I want to perform, you know, mouse over on that element. So what I will do is let's take that element first. So it is length, or I will say main menu, or main nav menu is this menu for men men. Okay, so on that element, I want to perform mouse over. So to perform a mouse over, what we need, we need object of actions class. So let's create objects of actions class. Uh, don't forget to import it. Okay, control space and select first one. I will say driver dot. Oh, why, why am I finding it element? Sorry. I want to create object of actions. So I'm saying new actions. Uh, then pass on the driver object. <coughs> and next is, uh, I have that actions object. Now what I will do is, actions dot, uh, if you want to perform mouse over there is a method uh, move to. Okay, so this the second and third method you see here. So move to it can take a web element, or you can say move to this web element and x and y coordinate. Okay, in my case, I have to use the second method that the method you see here, move to element. So that method is basically. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. So the method is move to, okay, the second method I am talking about, move to which element. So if you call this move to element, it will perform that mouse over on that element which you are passing. So there is one more method, move to element and then you can again say offset. So let's say I am saying uh, move to this element. Okay, if if I just say this much, then mouse will move to center of the element. Oops, my bad. Okay, so this is this is what is going to happen if I say this. All right. But let's say you don't want to move that mouse to the center. So what you can say is action dot move to sorry move to element say target this is my element and on that element let's say I want to move mouse at 10 x and 10 y coordinate on that element okay x value should be 10 y value should be 10 you know that way so if you want to have that mouse at some specific region, you can say something like this. But most of the time we only use this functionality, just move mouse over on the element. So, uh, so you know, this is what is going to work for us. So once you call this uh, move to element, don't forget to call perform method. Because unless you are not calling a perform, it, the action will not be performed on your web page. Always remember that, you know. Uh, so why we need to call a perform actually? The reason is you can combine multiple actions. Now for example, move to and click and then perform. So what you see here is I am first moving my mouse on the element, then perform a click, uh, you know, so combine two operations and perform both the operations as a single uh, you know, single operation that way. 
So uh, if you want to, you can actually add as many as actions you want. But in my case, I don't want to combine with multiple actions together. So I said action dot move to element, the main navigation menu, and then perform. All right. Uh, now what I will do is once I execute this line, that means the sub, navig sub, sub navigation menu, the sub menu should be open, right? Now how to check that sub navigation menu is open or not? So I will say menu, you know, I will, I will open that navigation menu. Now go here, inspect it. And what you see here is there is a UL. Okay, see I'm opening that navigation menu again, closing it, open, close, open, close. So, so some changes are happening, you know, you see that. Uh, some changes are happening in HTML, uh, this HTML. See, I'm again showing you. Close, open, close, open, close. So there are some changes happening at the HTML. I don't know how many of you have noticed, but as you can see, the HTML is getting highlighted for some seconds, you know, telling us that what are the changes are being done. So there are one li, two li, okay, these li's are changing their classes. You see that the classes are getting added. All right, let's uh, see again. Okay, let me a little bit, uh, let me scroll down a little bit. That is a hyperlink and that hyperlink is actually a footwear. Okay, so what I will do is I will just inspect. Okay, come little bit up okay see this ally this ally and as well as the, the blue allies also you know all of these allies are changing except one the third ally okay can you see that now these are the uh, first second third fourth fifth you know all the main main menus every ally is a main menu okay right now it is at normal stage but I am performing mouse over on men so if you perform mouse over on men, that men gets some different class. Can you see that there are two classes for every main menu, but men has WBT. I don't know how can I draw that, but let me try. Oops, just a second. Oops. Actually, the focus is going right, so I'm not able to. But as you can see, some see some changes here. You know, at this line, see the class underscore three m m o x n is getting added, but other elements have some different class. All right. So um, what I will do is I will just I I want to take the note. You know, three m m o x n. Okay, I'm manually going here. 3 mm o x n. I think underscore was there. I'm not sure mm was capital. Let me try. Okay, mm o was in small case. Three mm. Okay, it should start with underscore. Three mm o. Excellent, I guess. So if you add this class, automatically the sub -nav navigation is getting displayed. See, what I'm going to do is I will remove that one particular class. See, I'm removing it. Sub -nav navigation is gone. I'm going to again add that class. See, I just now added. You see, sub -nav navigation sub navigation is displayed. Okay, so uh, I hope you guys are clear. You know, this if you add this class, subnav subnav will be displayed. If you don't have this, that means subnavigation is not displayed. So that is that can be a one checkpoint. You know, whether the class is containing uh, underscore three m m o x n, that could be a one checkpoint. But let me tell you another simplest checkpoint. You know, so from that subnavigation menu, I will pick up the first one. 
I'm going to pick up the first element. So that is uh, element footwear. You know, it is a span footwear. It has title equal to footwear. Okay, that is the attribute because it it has a class, but this class is some random number. It you know it is not that user friendly to read. So better I am taking title equal to footwear and uh, write a CSS selector. See, just confirm is it one or how many matching element? There are two matching. Uh, let me see. Okay, the first one is uh, the right element, and there is a second element. Looks like F W O T W A R E. There are two footwears present on the web page. Let me search. It could be in hidden mode also. Oh, I'm sorry. By mistake, I clicked on some link. Hmm. So coming back on the home page, control F F W O T W A R E. Looks like there is no footwear word, but uh, it is. It should be there in some hidden mode. So title equal to footwear, you know. So this is one element and another element, you know. So there are uh, two elements. Let me see it again. That's one. That's one. Okay. This is one. So this is first one. This is second one. I'm. Let me see what is that second element. I don't know from where it is coming. Oh, that footwear is also present in women's menu. Can you see that? So if you go to women, somewhere you should have footwear. There should be somewhere, okay? I am not interested into the for yeah, you can see that footwear. So uh, that is the reason it was getting highlighted as two. But I am interested into the first element. So as long as this is first element, uh, the script should work. So coming back here, I will wait for some time. Thread dot slip. Okay, let's say five seconds. After waiting for a five seconds, uh, guys, if you are using thread dot slip, either declare as throws or declare as try catch. But in my personal opinion, I always suggest use try catch. You know, try catch so it will catch the exception. And after waiting for five seconds, I'm I'm adding the next code as web element uh, sub nav sub nav menu equal to find the element driver dot find element by dot CSS selector and that's my CSS selector. Just replace the double quote with single quote. Okay, I got the element. Now I will have a checkpoint. So checkpoint means assertion. So there are three methods mainly: assert true, assert equal, assert uh, null. You know, and every three method has opposite method. So assert equal has assert not equal, assert true has assert false, and assert null has assert not null a method. Okay, in assert that we have already learned in our previous tutorial. So in my case, the expected value, you know. On this element, I will call sub nav dot is displayed, okay? And the expected value of is displayed must be true. So I'm saying assert true because true is true is my expected. And optionally, you can also write a failure message. Let's say if this checkpoint is getting fail, the test will get fail with this failure message. So the failure message I'm going to add is. Sub nav was not open after uh, hovering mouse on menu uh, on menu which menu M E N. Okay, so that is a failure message. Uh, now it is time to test our script whether it is working or not. So just click the method, right click, run as, test ng test, and let's see if our script is still working or not.
Oh, okay. Uh, I have not handled this condition. Actually, if you open Flipkart for the first time in your new browser, uh, it opens this pop-up, you know. You need to take care of that pop-up as well. So, how you can take care of that pop-up? Just uh, click on the close button or reload that page again, you know. Reload that page again in the same browser. So, it will not ask you for the pop-up. You know, there are two, there could be two, oh, if you say reload, still it will ask. So, we need to click on the close. Guys, this is not a pop-up message. It is not the standard pop-up message coming from JavaScript. Okay, you can inspect this element. So, if you are able to inspect the element, then just locate it and click on close. So, there is a text as X, you know, text is looking like X. Uh, not sure if this is unique or not. So let me confirm whether it is unique or not. I want to use the text of that element. Okay. So I'm going to use XPath because CSS cannot use the inner text. So I'm going to use XPath. Any tag name whose text is that character X. And how many are there? There are just only one uh, element with this XPath selector. So the expect selector is this, okay, copy, go to the script after opening, you know, after opening, we, uh, I have added 30 seconds time uh, unit, implicit to it. So driver dot find element, which element? Y dot xpath, xpath because I have to use the inner text of a element, CSS cannot help you, okay. All right, so uh, that X keyword, it is not exactly a X, you know, it is some uh, character coming from uh, different encoding. So uh, let me try to set encoding UTF-8 and try to run this code. I'm not sure whether it will work or not because sometimes uh, Selenium doesn't, locate Selenium doesn't support uh, Unicode character in their locator. Let me check. Okay, the pop-up is there with the cross mark and it got closed. That means my CSS selector got worked. So, and as you can see that, you know, main, main, main menu is highlighted and the sub-navigation menu is displayed. That means mouse over ring on the main is performed. But guys, don't worry about that, you know, uh, hand icon which is on uh, right now at, you know, somewhere at the center of the screen. Uh, don't worry about it. Even though you see that hand icon here, it doesn't mean that mouse over is not happened. So mouse, as you can see, mouse over is happened and the sub navigation menu is also displayed. That means my test case has to be passed. So come back here and see what is there on the console. So on console, you can see the test case got passed. So this is how you perform a mouse over. And most of the time, uh, you know, all this main navigation, sub navigation, we do mouse overing operation. There are some other situations also we use mouse overing. Okay. Guys, do you have any questions? Let's discuss questions and answers on, if you have any questions on mouse over, we can discuss on that. Yeah, the one thing I wanted to tell you is implicitly wait. Let's say, you know, if you don't add implicitly wait, okay, so I'm just commenting it out. So I'm, I have not added implicitly wait. So what will happen is, let's say if this element is not loaded on the page, but still Selenium will try to click on the element and then it will immediately throw no such element exception. But I don't want no such element exception. What I want is, Selenium should automatically wait for some time, you know, keep on checking whether that element is loaded, element is loaded or not. If it is loaded, then continue. If it is not loaded, then wait. And 30 seconds, it is the maximum timeout, you know, for that, Selenium web driver will keep on um, checking whether that element is present or not. All right. And once you set implicitly wait, for your driver, okay, it is applicable to all the find element. So here also it is applicable, you know, if you go here, here also the find element is applicable, 
on this line also the find element is uh, the implicit timeout is applicable on this line also so you don't have to call uh, implicit wait again and again and again implicit wait is only called once uh, and most of the time it is after creating your brow browser or opening your browser the difference between sleep and wait okay the the first thing is there are different type of wait i am talking about implicit wait and the difference between sleep so difference between implicit wait and sleep is now at this line i am saying wait for 500 seconds i am saying wait for 500 milliseconds okay sorry uh, it is milliseconds that means 5 seconds so without any condition right am i saying that wait for some time and uh, you know until that element is present or something this is a mandatory wait this is a mandatory wait whereas this is kind of optional wait optional wait okay wait will only occur if um, element not found if locator was not matching to any element so mm, this is this is the difference you know main difference so let's say i'm saying 30 seconds implicitly wait but the element is shown within 10 seconds so the remaining 20 seconds will be saved okay but here i am saying wait for 5 seconds so it will compulsorily wait for 5 seconds irrespective of any condition checking uh, i hope i you got the uh, answer of what is the difference between sleep and wait uh, there are different types of synchronization uh, techniques also different types of waits also that we will cover in some other session not today Today we are focusing on performing the different operations, actions, basically. So one actions we have uh, completed now, just now, is performing mouse over. Now uh, you can actually combine this action with the multiple actions as so move to element on that man and then perform, uh, then call click dot click and then perform. So it is like you know it will be executed this action as combined so I don't know what is going to happen if you click on men let me try so I clicked on men is it doing anything I don't think so see nothing is going to happen if you click on men so that is also fine you can keep the same thing and still it will run but this is the way you can combine multiple actions and run it together all right <coughs> now uh, going to the next topic how to perform a right right click now see i'm right i'm going to right click on flipkart web page it show it shows me a normal browser menu right i uh, in in selenium automation testing we do not deal with this menu okay but there are some website um, you know if you right click on those website it shows some different menu now for example online let's say online right click example okay building a custom right click context menu okay um, we can check any example actually okay let me see if they have given some demo or something okay I don't see it here Okay, so I found an example <coughs> which uses a jQuery internally for handling this right click. So there is a button, you know, right click me. If you right click on this uh, button, you see a different menu. And you know, what I wanted to say is, I wanted to right click and uh, click on edit. Once you say edit, it, will, it should show a pop-up with clicked as edit message. You know, I want to confirm a pop-up is shown with clicked as edit message. So let's go and write a test case for this. Okay, I'm creating a new class. Uh, 
right click menu <coughs> okay uh, let me copy some initial code from the previous example that we just now learned I'm just going to copy this four or five lines oops all right the URL will be different the URL is going to be this <coughs> and then now it is time to inspect that button first okay so I will say okay right click <laughs> see right click inspect is not coming so in that case uh, go here say more tools and then develop a tool okay we are used to with right click and say inspect but uh, sometimes if that inspect is not coming use this technique click on this uh, select option select move your mouse over that element you know wherever you want and there you will see the HTML so so the HTML is it is a span okay it's a span tag with a with how many classes there is a context menu one that's one class second class is button third class is button neutral so there are three classes it has a text also so right click me you may want to use the text for locating that element but this is the inner text right <coughs> so if you want to you take inner text we use XPath. So again, it is matching to two el two elements. So uh, not sure why is it two? Let's see. Okay, it is also matching to this code because here also there is a right click me present. Okay, <coughs> so there you can see right click me is also present so it is getting matched for that element also so what I will use is I will take something uh, other locator instead of that inner text let me try context menu one class okay is it unique is this class is unique so this is a class right I can use CSS selector class starts with a dot so I'm saying dot and then paste the class name see how many elements are getting matched uh, guys it is not a tag right it is this match is not a tag next go to next this is also not a tag this is also not a tag and this is the tag you know only check only look for the element which is matching for the tag <coughs> or what you can say is you can say span dot class name you know so span having this class uh, this is just a unique right so there is only one tag with with a tag name as a span and the class is this okay you can simply use the class name also that is also fine so I'm saying driver dot find element by dot class name the class name is this context menu one and on the class name what I want to perform is double click <coughs> so there is no direct method double click so I'm saying let's get that web element you know let's say button and I will say actions class object actions object let's say a is equal to new uh, I'm sorry actions pass the driver object okay this is the way you can create object of action it is actions sorry and on that actions object say a dot context click if you say a dot context click <coughs> that means it will perform the context click that is right click on the current element which is selected now let's say if you call a uh, mouse over you know uh, initially and then you call a context click that means it will perform or you know the right click on the element on which the mouse is there so for example uh, a dot move to move to element okay let's say pass some element and on that element you are saying that context click 
and then you are saying perform. So what it will do is it will first move your mouse on that element then right click and then perform ok. But in my case what I will say is context click directly pass on the element so which is element btn and say perform. So this line will perform right click on this button. Another alternative way is go to that element perform context click this is one alternative way but more reliable is this this one ok. Once you see once you perform right click there should be a menu and I want to click on edit alright. So let's inspect the edit also ok. I want to inspect that edit also go here uh, this is what it is a uh, context menu icon edit. Let me see. I think this context menu icon edit must be unique. You know this edit class name. Guys, you need to use some uh, human intelligence. You know to identify which could be a unique. So I think this is going to be unique. So just copy it and check is it unique. So I'm saying uh, dot context menu icon edit but it is not shown. Now why is this happening? Let us find out you know is it inside frame sometimes you know it happens that it is inside frame. I don't think it is inside a frame. Say so enter again. No it is not getting matched. Alright. Let's inspect again. Oh it, it is because of that pop-up is displayed. Sorry. Okay. Check now. Is it unique? Yeah, it is found. So this class name is working. Copy, perform and then find driver dot find element by dot class name ok I am just adding that class name and on that element I want to say click not clear. If you say clear then it will try to clear the value of the text box but it is not text box you know I don't want to do clearing on text box. So I said click and after clicking there will be a pop up right and it is a javascript pop up guys let me show you see this is a javascript pop up ok. There are three type of pop up alert confirm and uh, prompt right. So this is this is example of alert you see only one button right. So it is alert. <coughs> so class alert alert is actually interface you know alert equal to I want to switch my driver driver dot switch to dot alert. So if you say driver dot switch to dot alert we have already covered this topic but let me tell you shortly. If you say driver dot switch to dot alert my driver will go to the alert and that alert object will be returned. Now what I want is I want to return I want to read that actual text present on the alert message that you can get it from the alert object dot get text method. Ok, that, that text you will get it from the alert dot get text. Alright, now it is time to compare assert dot assert equal the actual text I am saying the expected text you have to give expected is uh, clicked colon space edit this is expected and I will say alert text failed as the last parameter a failure message you know if the checkpoint is getting fail if actual and expected is not matching then test will fail with the failure message. Alright and finally I will say a dot accept or uh, accept or dismiss you know if you want to click uh, or close that action but I am just leaving it as it is. Let's see if this script is working. So we learn how to perform a context click. Mm, yeah, the browser is open. Alright, see 
the right click happened, edit is clicked and it is showing you a pop up and let's see if the automation script is passed. Uh, you can see a status as it is passed. So in automation script, uh, we switched our driver to alert. We got alert object. We read the text of that alert. That is the actual text compare with the expected text and the assert got passed. So this is the way we perform a context click. <clears throat> now next example is a send keys. You know, you can also perform uh, send keys. Now, for example, uh, let me create a class. Actions. I will copy some initial code. Okay, I will copy that initial code as this, including the test also. Uh, yeah, so go here and no, not this one, right? So send keys. Yeah, this is the example. Press the few line of code from the previous example. So what I'm going to do is uh, I will locate element driver dot find element by dot tag name and the tag I'm locating is body. Okay, let's say this is the tag, body tag, right? Do you know everybody? HTML has head and body. So I'm locating the main body tag. So let's take web element body element is equal to. <clears throat> now what I will do is I will create actions class. Actions, okay, uh, is equal to new. I'm sorry, I forgot to write object name. A is equal to new actions, pass the driver, A dot, I will say send keys directly. Okay, now there are two variant of send keys. If you say send keys, simply it will perform the send keys on the current element, whichever the element is. If you say send keys on some element and this is the text you have to send. So this is another way you can actually perform typing, you know. So I will say that body element and on that body element, you know, uh, it takes character sequence. That means keys dot, keys is a enum and I'm saying F11. So the key I'm sending is F11, you know. Let's see what happens if you say F11 key as the send keys, you know. Let's run. So the F11 key is most of the time used to, uh, you know, make your browser as a full screen browser. So uh, let me see if it is working. Sometimes this feature are dependent on browser to browser and may not work in all the browser. <coughs> okay, um, there is already a pop up. So looks like that is just blocking the send keys. So as you can see that send keys is performed, but the thing is that body is not visible maybe. Okay. Uh, this send keys, you know, some keys combination may or may not work for some browser. So, you know, it is not that much reliable. Uh, what we will do is we will take some other example for ex uh, learning send keys. <coughs> Let's say online alt keys events. Keyboard event and codes. Uh, key down and keyboard event something okay so what is it I will say enter oh yeah I am saying G okay 
All right. So uh, I will say control. Can you see that if I say control, it is it becomes true. I'm saying shift. Shift becomes true. I will say alt. It becomes true, right? <clears throat> so let's take this example, and I'm going to change the code. Okay. Is it supporting F keys? No. So what I will do is instead of F key, I will say uh, shift R shift S H I F T. Okay, left shift and shift. By default, shift is R R, R shift. So the right hand side shift. See, if you say shift, it should show you 16 value with the shift as true. Okay. So let me run this script. Okay, looks like that uh, did not happen in the timely manner. We need some kind of wait or something. So I will add thread dot slip. Let me try adding a wait. It could be a issue with the wait. These are kind of runtime issues that we face most of the time when we perform automation. <coughs> so uh, this time I'm just saying throws interrupted exception instead of writing try catch. And let's run it. Okay, still it is not working. Oh, it is actually send keys on the text box, okay? But it still works, you know, maybe let me inspect it again and see which element I'm performing. So on the body, actually, it should work because if you go here and still perform keys event, it works. Uh, let me try that with the text box, you know. It is having ID as entry. So instead of directly saying by dot tag name, I will say ID. ID is entry. And I will say shift plus A. Okay. A has to be in double quote because it's a text. Let's see. All right. Okay, looks like uh, this this website is only working for the real keyboard action and Selenium is not able to uh, you know give the action uh, to perform you know the events. So what I will do is I will try one more time. Okay, that's the element. Actions. Why is showing me blue? Okay. Actions, I already have it. On that actions, I will first say move to move to element. The element which I want to move is uh, this one. TXT okay then send keys uh, on the txt as uh, let's say vikas and then perform let me try uh, with this option okay before send keys i will say click and say right click run as test ng test
okay let's see what is happening okay now this time it worked <clears throat> so uh, initially I had to say move to element then text then click then send keys so this is like low level uh, performance you know low level automation instead of you know doing all of this you can actually skip this part and simply say send keys but that may not work guys okay let me give you uh, let me run this script it may not work sometimes the automation script requires move to you know and click or some kind of event you know so that it will work so let's wait for some time yeah even this is working I don't know I think I was doing something wrong maybe now what I will do is I will try to perform uh, let's say I want to say that shift A you know how to do that so let me tell you <coughs> A dot uh, sorry I wasn't mute so uh, what I will say is a dot um, uh, key down let's say I want to say key down now I will say keys dot shift okay dot then I will again say uh, send keys which key I want to send I want to send a key or let's say because uh, I will send Vikas in lower case and let's see okay send key is Vikas and next I will say dot key up you know now which key I want to up that is keys dot shift you can use control C control V and that kind of combination but you, you will have to say key down control then perform some shortcuts send keys A then key up control you know that way and at the end call perform perfect so let's run the script and see the behavior oh I forgot to say that you know where to perform this but okay let me try all right so it is performed but uh, it's 83 um, the character is S that is Vikas last character you see that right and the shift was enabled shift was enabled uh, key press was called key up was not called okay not sh okay so what I wanted to say is a dot move to this element or you can simply say click click on this element you know instead of move to a dot click and do this all operation you know a dot click on the text box and then then key down then send Vikas and then shift up you know let's see these values are changing you know and this this will only show you the last value <coughs> wait for five seconds and you can see uh, these are the values which are um, you know generated uh, so yeah this is how you can actually perform the different key operations shift uh, key up key down you can combine multiple you know let's say control shift you want to say that then you can say again key down and there you can pass control you know keys dot control okay left control or control you just say control you can also pass enter and that way you know uh, but try to make things simple you know don't use it unnecessarily keep this as a last option if you don't have any other option then only use this key events because sometimes uh, uh, you know sending these keys are very uh, fragile you know it may work or may not work sometimes so 
yeah but yeah this is this is how we do it so that's all for uh, today and uh, we we have covered three topics today that is performing mouse over performing right click and also performing the send keys you know with for sending different keys including key down key up you know combination so uh, there is few more examples drag and drop uh, key press and release that is what you are going to uh, learn in our next tutorial thank you guys thank you very much for attending this session um, really glad that you are taking out time and uh, attending this session I'm really thankful to everyone so have a good night bye bye let me know if you have any questions you can post questions on the chat window bye bye guys <laughs>